President Trump says this week after a grim American outlook from the Democrats, the RNC's overall message will focus on the good. But after Joe Biden's strong DNC address, what does the president need to do this week to recapture the momentum? Joining us now to discuss Republican strategist Joseph Pinion and legal affairs reporter for The Washington Times, Alex Swoyer. Thanks to the both of you for being here. First question to Alex, what does the president need to do this week? positive message is um, something that will definitely be contrasted to what we're hearing from Joe, from Joe Biden, what we heard at the DNC last week. Uh, there's been a heavy focus from the Democrats on COVID and the administration's handling of the pandemic. And so I think if President Trump um, delivers a positive message about therapeutics coming out, vaccines, that sort of thing, that that could really go far with voters. Joseph, how can the president capitalize on this convention week? Look, I think it's a good opportunity to remind the American people about what has actually transpired over the last four years, uh, namely that there was a duly elected president of the United States who the Democrats tried to remove from office via impeachment. I think we get bogged down in the reality that we have a global catastrophe um, of COVID-19, but the fact remains is that we have pretty much every single Democrat um, elected around this country has supported President Trump trying to be removed from office. I think many people have forgotten about that. That fact, and I think it should not be lost on people that Trump's highest approval numbers came on the heels of him being cleared of impeachment, coming off of that stage for his last state of the union. Let's take a look at some other interesting numbers. This really stood out to me. A majority of conservative voters prefer not to hear about Joe Biden at the RNC. You see, 15 percent why they think Biden should not be elected is something they want to hear, but 85 percent really want to hear what President Trump and the other people that are going to be speaking, they would do if elected. So I look at that and say, voters want answers, not attacks. Is that what the Republican voter really wants? Alex. I think it was very noticeable that all last week we didn't really hear much about China from the Democratic Party. And again, um, last night we heard uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris do their first joint interview, and China didn't come up at all. That's something that President Trump has focused on. It's obviously big um, part of the pandemic and, and what we've been covering. So I think that uh, the president has actually released his campaign, uh, a statement last night, talking about his second administration goals and bringing manufacturing back from China is part of that. And I think that that helped him in 2016, and it will do so even more this time. Joseph, same question to you. Will Republicans focus more on the policy and less on the attacks than the Dems did last week? Well, look, I think the reality is that the American people, they like Joe Biden. Uh, the fact remains that you can't trust Joe Biden because the Joe Biden that you would get is somebody who is surrounded by extremists on the left, somebody who just had Bernie Sanders come speak at his convention and say that socialism was mainstream Democratic bedrock policies, and nobody pushed back because they know it's the truth. And so I think this will be a good week for Republicans to focus on the fact that we are the ones that have solutions to the problem face in America heading into a 21st century world, the media doesn't ask Joe Biden any questions because they know he does not have the answers. And so I think if Republicans can hone in on that key point, it will be a successful week because ultimately, at the end of the day, what the American people are looking for are answers to the most pressing issues. Number one, will grandma still be alive? And can those 7 million people that got jobs to be President Trump pre-COVID have a pathway to get back to work? Quick rapid fire. First to you, Alex. Who's going to be the standout speaker? when we're talking about this whole convention come Friday morning. I think President Trump will be the most standout, but I do think it's going to be interesting to hear from um, Secretary of State Pompeo, given the amount of foreign policy issues that this administration has faced, okay. um, just as I had mentioned before about China, too. Joseph, quickly to you, you can't say President Trump. This is going to be like one of those <laughs> keeper leagues in uh, fantasy football. Besides President Trump. Who's going to be the standout no, person? I, I, I'm looking forward to hearing from the prime minister of Israel. America no. has no greater friend than our friend in Israel. And I think that, again, if Michelle Obama wants to say this is a matter of life or death, I think for the Jewish people, um, this is particularly an important choice when we start talking about what is American partnership going to look like moving forward. Alex, Joseph, we always appreciate your insight. It's going to be a wild and fun week. We'll check back in with you when it's done. Thank you so much.